Hi everyone, welcome to my tutorial on how I draw faces. And let's start with drawing the head. And I like to use two main shapes, the first one being the circle. And the size of the circle that we're going to draw pretty much defines the size of the head. So the smaller the circle, the smaller the head. And the bigger the circle, the bigger the head. And the next shape is the inverted triangle. And the height of this triangle actually defines the shape of the jaw that we want to draw. So for example, for a pointy jaw, we'll have to draw a tall triangle. However, a square jaw um, is a short triangle. And the next thing I like to take note of is the distance between the circle and the inverted triangle because changing this distance can help us create a range of face shapes such as an oval face shape, a square face shape, and a triangle face shape. And there are actually three main combinations that I like to use, which you can see on the screen, but for the demonstration I will be using the first combination and the most common one. Now that we have the basic head shape, let's add in the guidelines for the facial proportions, which is the ratio that I like to use. So let's start by dividing the head into two vertical sections and six horizontal sections so that we end up with a total of seven horizontal lines. And I've named each line as line one, two, three, and so on so that it's easier to explain. But basically, line one is for the top of the head Line 2 is for the hairline. Line 3 is for the eyebrows. Line 4, which is the halfway point of the head, is for the eyes. Line 5 is for the nose. Line 6 is for the mouth. And lastly, line 7 is for the chin. Now that we have the guidelines, we can start adding in the facial features, starting with the eyes. When drawing the eyes, I like to start with a basic leaf shape on line four. And the height of this shape um, can determine how big or how small the eyes we want to draw. I also like to take note of the outer point because changing the placement of this, whether it's a little bit higher up or a little bit lower, it can give us a range of eye shapes such as an almond eye shape or a downturned eye shape. And the next shape that we draw is the circle in the middle, which is the iris. And of course, when you move this to the left or to the right, it indicates the direction of the person's gaze. And then we also have an arch above the eye to indicate the eyelid or the crease of the eye. Now the distance of this to the eye gives us a range of eye shapes once again. So for example, a monolid or deep set eyes. And also changing the angle of this can give us either upturned eyes or downturned eyes. And the last thing I like to take note of is the distance of the left eye to the right eye. Normally, this distance is another eye. However, you can draw the eyes closer together for close set eyes or further apart for wide set eyes. When drawing the eyebrows, I always draw it below line three and I start with a simple arch. Then I make one side thicker than the other. That's basically it. However, changing the height of this arch can either give us a nicely arched brow or a straight brow. When drawing the nose, I like to start with a circle just above line five, and the size of this circle can give us a range of nose shapes. So for example, the smaller the circle, the pointier and narrow the nose usually is, whereas a bigger circle creates a wider and rounder nose. I then draw two arches for the nostrils, and the height and angle of this arch can also be changed for a bit of diversity. I also like to draw two more lines that look like the letter C to complete the nose, and the final touch are two lines for the bridge of the nose, so it connects down from the eyebrows to the circle that we drew for the nose. And you can draw this as light or as heavy as you want, depending if you want this to be way more pronounced. When drawing the mouth, I start with a basic leaf shape with a V cut out on top and a line in between. And I draw this on top of line six 
and the width of this is normally wider than the width of an eye. But changing this width basically gives you either small lips or wide lips. And then changing the height of this shape can actually also determine how large and plump you want the lips to be or how thin the lips are. And then, of course, you can alter the shape to create a more realistic look of the lips. When drawing the ears, I like to start with a line that looks like the letter C. And the degree of this line's curve pretty much determines the size of the ear from the front view. So some people do have ears that stick out, so that will be a very curved C that we draw, whereas some people's ears don't really stick out as much, so the curve of the letter C that we draw isn't as pronounced. I also draw like this random looking line for a very simplified look of the ear. When it comes to drawing the hairline, I have four options that I use to create the different face shapes. So for example, we have an arch, which can create an oval face shape. This is very common. We have a pointed arch, which can create a diamond face shape, a straight line, can create a square face shape, and lastly, a letter M can create a heart face shape. However, sometimes this won't even come in handy since hairlines are normally hidden due to different hairstyles, for example, when you draw someone with bangs. The last thing I like to add to my portraits are circles or ovals. And I actually use the circle that we initially drew for the head as a guide when placing the ovals for the cheeks. I do like to add these, but for you, it's optional. However, if you've been following my style and my art, you would know that I like to add these for my portraits. I also like to draw an oval on the forehead just between the eyebrows, as this will help me when I color the face in later. And then lastly, I like to add a circle on the chin just underneath the mouth, as this one helps me shape the jaw. And as a bonus, feel free to draw the neck for a more realistic look and something that I personally like. I draw it almost as wide as the jaw. However, you can change the width to make it nice and slender. And once you've added in all of the facial features and the hair as well, which will hopefully be in another video, you finally have drawn a face. So when it comes to drawing faces and pretty much anything, I highly recommend using references because reference images are very helpful when you're just starting out to draw. And it also gives you an idea of the diversity in faces, face shapes, and facial proportions. So I do hope that you've got an idea of what the basics are and how you can change that up through this video. I also highly recommend practicing regularly to try out other combinations and pretty much to experiment with the guidelines that I've shown you in this video. There are honestly no rules. Anything that I've showed you in this video only serves as a guide. So technically it is up to you whether or not you wanna follow them. But I do hope that you have found this helpful. In the description box are some links to resources and exercise sheet that I've also included. And lastly, of course, I hope that your main takeaway from this is to have fun because that's the most important part of drawing. Have fun and enjoy the process. So if you like this video, and I hope that you did, if you found this helpful, and I also hope that you did, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, in the comment section down below of anything you'd like to see from me in the future because I would like to bring this channel back to life. Um, subscribe if you haven't already for more content from me. Um, feel free to share this video as well. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Look at all this amazing art. Man, I really wish I was able to draw. You are, you stupid f You just need to start practicing it. What? No, I can't. Oh, really? Have you ever even tried to draw?
You haven't, eh? I, I tried once like two years ago and it didn't work out. It just looked ugly. Dude, you spent like two minutes and zero effort on that. Like, w- what did you expect? Uh, I, I don't know. If you want to get good at drawing, you gotta start practicing it. Fine. I'll... I'll watch the tutorial. Good. See, I can't draw it. <laughs> it just looks ugly. Dude, it'll take more time than that to get good, you know? What? Are you telling me it actually takes effort to be able to draw? That can't be right. <laughs> All right, all right, I'll, I'll try harder, just shut your mouth. In this beautiful fandom, there are tons of amazing artists drawing a ton of super cool fluffy animals, so one day I was wondering if I could do the same thing. I quickly found an answer to it, and it's yes, yes I can draw super cute fluffy animals, I just need a lot more practice before I'll be able to do it. You see, I found a rule, it's called the 10,000 hours rule, it says that to reach the top of a field, like really the top, it will take me at least 10,000 hours of practice to get there. That's a pretty terrifying number, that's the same as practicing for 1 hour every day for 27 years and 265 days. But I mean, it's also pretty cool though, right? Because it means that I can become anything I want as long as I get all of them hours of practice down. Wanna become an amazingly skilled artist? 10,000 hours, done. Wanna become an amazingly skilled brain surgeon? 10,000 hours, done. But then again, it's pretty depressing. It's 10,000 hours, you know? I wanna be able to draw super cool fluffy animals right now, not 10 to 30 years into the future. However, I did some more digging, and I found a way more motivating rule. It says that with about 20 to 30 hours of deliberate practice, I will gain the basic understanding of something. So, that means that if I spend 30 hours on trying to draw furries, I should be able to draw furries that looks okay-ish. So, with all of that in mind, I decided that I was gonna draw for 1 hour a day, 30 days in a row. I started by looking up tutorials on how to draw, which led me to draw with Jessa's YouTube channel. There I found something insanely cool, which I will recreate right now. Here we have a small stick figure, however this is a very, very bad stick figure. Now if we just do some small changes, it's already kinda looking better, it looks more human-like. If we then start moving the limbs around, we show the stick figure trying to communicate something. And if we then add in slightly more movement, we can make things look pretty cool actually. We can even start making animations by just using simple stick figures. Another cool thing that Jessa teaches me is that everything we draw is built up by really simple shapes. Take the human body for example. The breast is just a big rectangle, the shoulders are just small circles, the head is just another circle and that's pretty much how things go. We draw the simple shapes and then we start building on top of those shapes. So thanks for all that lovely information Jessa, you are really inspiring and I love your content. After I had gotten some basic drawing knowledge, I started looking up pictures and tutorials on foxes. Because you know, I'm a filthy furry, I wanna draw foxes. And here you see some of the stuff I drew in the first couple of days. <clears throat> it's... it's pretty bad. And I had actually been trying to draw for like a year and a half before I did the challenge. It's just that for that year and a half I didn't really try very hard. Yeah. After some days of trying my best to draw foxes, I quickly found out that trying to draw when I don't really know how to feels really bad. It felt like everything I drew looked like it could have been made by a kindergartner, and it honestly probably could have been. <laughs> It doesn't feel good knowing that I absolutely suck. But I figured I'd just continue drawing, even if it felt awful, because, you know, I had set a goal. I wanted to be able to draw furries, and I will be able to. I just gotta keep on trying. So, day 15. On a lot of days, I was feeling like I wasn't making any progress at all. Sometimes it felt like I did even worse than I did at the beginning. So... That kinda sucked. But even on those days though, it was still pretty cool and comforting to be able to see the lines on the paper in front of me. Sure, the lines were absolutely awful, but... They were there. I had been sitting and drawing for an hour. I had done something. And I also started feeling more comfortable with drawing. Sure, the drawing still looked like a miscarriage, but I started feeling more comfortable with being bad at it. I accepted that I was awful, and it's okay to be awful. Just have fun with drawing, that's what's important. So figuring that out was pretty cool. Fast forward to day 30. Now I had been drawing for an hour a day for an entire month, and I'd actually continued to draw for a couple of days after that as well. It still doesn't look very good, but it certainly got way better than what it was. There are still tons of things missing, and I still have a really long way to go if I ever want to get really good. But you know, it's a start, and it feels nice to have a start. As a whole, I really love doing this challenge. It's a very cool way to try to learn something, and it can be applied to pretty much anything. Take Boy in a Band, for example. 30 days of trying to sing? Boom! He got better at singing. Amazing! So if there's anything that you want to learn, like dancing or first it making or you know whatever maybe you can try this out as well it's both very fun and also very challenging at times so that was everything i had to say thanks for watching and i hope you have a great day you lovely creature bye bye ah feels so good 30 days in a row man yeah i'll admit you did a pretty good job thanks i feel really proud you know i'm satisfied yeah it was a rad start now you just need to continue you know yeah yeah i'm a just yeah yeah so are you gonna continue ah ah
Mm. Dude, you can't stop now. You were on such a good roll. Don't, don't, don't worry, I'm continuing. I just need a little break. A little break? All right, all right. How, how long are we talking? Oh, just three, four months or something, and then I'll get right back to it, I promise. Oh, for f sake. If you liked this video, it would be really helpful if you shared it, as it, you know, it helps get the word out and stuff. As always, my character is drawn by Luxus Stargriff, and the background music is created by Laugh of the Fox. Please check them both out, they are really amazing people. That was all, folks. Bye-bye.